Let's look at triggers in detail. Every slide has triggers. The next and back buttons have triggers. The trigger is that by clicking on the next button, you go forward a screen. But triggers can be more complex than that. Let me create a scenario. I have a screenshot of this menu bar from Microsoft Word, and I'm telling the user that they must click on the highlighted red box. By clicking on the highlighted red box, they'll then be able to see what the option is that's below it. So I created this box here. So let's put this in a position where I want them to click. So I'll say that if they click on this red box, then they'll see the fonts options. I've created a layer called fonts layer. And in this font layer is a screenshot of all the different fonts in Microsoft Word that are available. It is just a screenshot as you can see. Go back to my main layer. So what I want is a trigger so that if a user clicks on this, then it's going to show the fonts layer. So the first thing to do is select the actual box that you want to be clickable. And then on triggers, go to create a new trigger. And we have the option here. So the option is show layer. But it could be any of these ones, so always pick the right one. So on this one, it's a show layer. And we want to show the layer, which is called fonts layer. It's defaulted to that because there's not any other ones available. If there's multiple layers, you could select them. So when, so when is when the user clicks, it could be any of these things here, on the object, which is rectangle one. And this is rectangle one. Press OK. And we've created a trigger. So go to preview, preview this slide, and let's see it working. So the slide's loaded up, and we'd have some text that says, please click on the red box to learn more about fonts. Notice if I hover my mouse over it, you can see the mouse cursor changes from an arrow into a hand. That's because it's a clickable object. Click it, you can see this layer has appeared. So that's how easy it is to create a trigger. But you can have triggers doing different things. So let's look at those. I've edited this layer to put a couple of boxes in here. Got boxes called images and a box is called bullet points. Now I'm thinking what I'll do is have it so it's clickable, so the user can click on this and they'll go to the box that's called image, which is this one here. So let's just rename that one there. Images, or this one here, which is bullet points. Now you don't need to name these, but it does make life a lot easier when you when you're telling how to get it so along what to do. So I'm going to have it. So if a user clicks on that, they'll go to this images box or page. And if they go to this, click on this bullet points, they'll go to the bullet points page. So let's do triggers for that. So I've clicked on the box called images. I'm going to click on create a new trigger. And what I'm going to do instead of show layer, I want to jump to slide. And now the default is to jump to the next slide, which it happens to be the next slide, but that's just more coincidence than anything. What I'm going to do though, instead of going to the next slide, I'm going to tell it where to go. So I want it to go to this slide called Images. And notice you've got a slide here called This Slide. Now if you did this slide, it would take you back to the start, because remember, we're on a layer. We're on a font layer at the moment. So what would happen, you would just reload the slide again. Let's go to Images. When the user clicks on Rectangle 1, click OK. Let's preview this. So remember, I set it up so the user has to click on this box. So they click on the box to learn about fonts. The font comes up. And then on this layer, you've got a trigger to click on images. Now notice that the uh, the hand icon changes, but it stays as a mouse cursor on this one because I've not set this one up yet. If I was to click on that, it says the slide target's not available, but that's because I just previewed it as one's page. But I can assure you it works. In fact, let's just go for, let's do the entire project just to prove it. So I need to go to the screen that I want. So click on that, click on images. There you go, it takes me to the page. I actually call it graphics, but it's the right page. It's the page that I wanted. So that is again, a very simple trigger. Now this is a type of trigger that you'd use a menu system. So if I was to go back to a menu, so I've got a menu up here. This is exactly what it's doing. So I've clicked on this one here. It's going to be jump to slide 2.1, 
when the user clicks on this item. This one here, jump to the next slide. You know, so some of them have been set up, some of them haven't been. This one here jumps to media interaction. So it's, it's done in that same principle. So that's how you can do triggers to jump to different areas. But let's try this bullet points one. It's the same principle, click on create a new trigger. So the action is to jump to slide. Now I've got it so when a user clicks on rectangle two, but it could be when a user double clicks on it, when a user right clicks on it. Now if you do right clicks, it's not gonna work if someone's gonna be using a mobile phone or a tablet because they can't right click on something. When the user clicks outside, when the mouse hovers over, again, hovering doesn't work when you're on a mobile phone. So there's lots of different options on here. Let's go for mouse hovers over, rectangle two, and I want them to jump to the bullet point slide. So I'll preview this, preview the entire project just to show you it working. Uh, I'll go to the appropriate page, which is this one here. Click on there. So images, if I say click on that, it would take me to that images or graphics page. If I, there's bullet points though, are you ready? I'm just gonna hover over it. Okay, it takes me straight there. I did not click, okay, I just hovered over it. Now, that's just to show you how it works. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you jumped to another slide because a user hovers over something. Um, the reason I wouldn't recommend it is because if I was to accidentally, you know, I'm going to click on images and I accidentally move a mouse over the other one, it just moved me away. You know, so I'd never recommend you do that. But it shows that it works. The hover though would work in this instance. So maybe you have it instead of a user clicking on rectangle one, you have it so the user mouse hovers over rectangle one and has previewed this slide. So in this instance, my mouse hovers over it, and there you go, it all comes up. When my mouse is not hovering over it though, it goes away. So I couldn't then do anything with it. I can't then go and click on images because it disappears. So you've got to choose the trigger which is appropriate for what you're trying to achieve. So the fonts layout one, and this is actually a key point as well. I've created this trigger, for me to change it, I just click on the appropriate part to change. I don't need to recreate a new trigger. And if I do want to edit it, right click on it, edit. It brings up the options that we had previously. And again, this is where you could choose something different. 